An Indiana woman has been accused of taking a life and dismembering her husband before enlisting her two teenage children to help dispose of the body. Thessalonica Allen, a resident of Laporte, Indiana, allegedly took the life of her husband with a weapon. That husband, Randy Allen, was inside of an apartment in the city last week. Subsequently, she allegedly dismembered him and placed his body parts in a bag. In the affidavit, it alleges that she planned to place the remains in a car and light them on fire. According to the affidavit, police in Laporte stated that a Michigan man told them that Allen, age 34, showed him her husband's body in a closet of her apartment. The man alleged Allen had asked him to help move the body, which he declined to do before asking her to drive him back to Michigan. During the car ride back to the state, the man told authorities that Allen threw a weapon out of the car. After police found and later arrested Allen, the mother allegedly confessed that she had wounded and took the life of Randy and that his body was inside the closet within her daughter's bedroom. Authorities later found her husband's dismembered body inside of a tote in the apartment. In follow-up interviews, Allen's two teenage children told police that on the night of the fatal incident, Randy had helped them with their homework on a computer when he found a website that their mom had visited. Police stated that when Allen returned home, Randy allegedly asked her about the site in question. The couple had an argument during which Randy stated he was going to leave. The two teens told authorities they heard a loud bang, later saw Randy on the floor asking them to call 911 for help. The two teens stated that their mother told them not to call police, alleging that they were later woken up in the middle of night by Allen asking them to help dispose of Randy's body. Allegedly, she also asked the two teens to clean the crime scene the next day as well. The police executed a search warrant of Allen's home. Authorities found an axe and a knife inside of the mother's closet that had a residue of red-like substance that appeared to be blood. The tote, which had the body of Randy inside, was also located. Several handwritten notes with a checklist of things to do related to Randy's death were also found under a pillow in Allen's daughter's room. Allen faces multiple charges, including murder, abuse of a corpse, and child neglect. It was not immediately clear if she had entered a plea or retained an attorney to comment on her behalf. So, you know, I thought it was bad when I first heard the story, right, when it just came across the desk. But then I saw a different article and it went a little bit more in depth. And this is what they had to state. Prior to sentencing, relatives of the victim told the court that Allen loved his wife and four stepchildren. And if there were problems, Miss Allen should have just left instead of destroying the family. They later stated that testimony presented at the trial indicated that the couple was arguing over social media posts seen by Mr. Allen that made him think that she was interested in another man. Miss Allen, claiming to be a battered wife, claimed self-defense and that her husband lunged at her before she fired the weapon. After the sentencing, LaPorte County Deputy Prosecutor Julianne Havens stated that there were no bruises or other injuries discovered on Miss Allen following her arrest or any other evidence of him striking her physically. However, she stated that there were handwritten notes from Mrs. Allen recovered from the home that outlined different ways to take the life of her husband. It was also stated that by Miss Havens that the notes also contained the names of people she felt would help her carry out the plot. So again, we're dealing with a woman who already planned this out. And Mr. Allen was not incorrect in the assumption that his wife is, you know, interested in a different guy. Because more than likely that same guy that Miss Allen picked up to bring to the home to try to help her with the plot of cleaning up the crime scene was more than likely the one that Mr. Allen saw his wife online leaving comments or directly talking to. Like I said, she drove from Indiana to Michigan to go pick up a guy to bring him back to her house. So again, uh, Mr. Allen was directly on the money. It's a shame that Mr. Allen loved her. 
he also was a man that stepped up. He was like, hey, you know, I love you and I accept everything that's going on. And because I love you, I love these four kids as well. And he decided to make her his wife. Little did he know that that was the wrong choice to make. I'm pretty sure at the time he thought that he struck gold, right? I'm pretty sure that he thought that he won the lottery. He, you know, has a woman that he loves. He has, you know, a, a family and, you know, he was doing what it is that he was supposed to do. He was there as a stepfather. He was helping the kids out with their homework, you know, and all for them to basically see this man one day and to not exist the next day. And then to have the mother try to guilt trip or to coerce the, the two kids into cleaning up a crime scene of which she created. She already had this planned out. So instead of her going through the whole divorce, instead of her allowing this man to leave because he found out what it was that she was actually about. She was like, no, you ain't leaving. I'm just going to sit up there and get rid of you. That's the most illogical, ridiculous thing that I have ever heard. You could, you could have just lived separately. You, you, you could have just gotten divorced. You literally destroyed your whole family. You sacrificed your whole freedom. You traumatized a whole nother man that was, I guess, interested in you. That's crazy. Like what? Like, th and I've, I've tried to tell people before that if you only focus on one side of the individuals who are committing the crimes, you're going to miss out on a whole nother department. And then it's going to avalanche, snowball and avalanche into a problem that you're not going to be able to stop. So, again, I'm stating for the women out there that always want to point out all of the things that men are doing criminally. You need to pay attention to what it is that women are doing, because very easily uh, two men could have easily lost their lives. Mr. Allen was already the first one. The one that she decided to pick up from Michigan could have been the next one. Because if that dude, if he was like, nah, I ain't doing this, I'm out. If, if he would have acted any other type of way about it, I'm pretty sure she probably would have took his life as well. Because, again, this is what she does. And then not only that, you have the two kids, which more than likely, you know, were helping her out, were males. What does that then, what, what image does that put into their mind? What does that then speak to when they want to go out here and try to potentially find a mate directly out there? Their first love is their mother. So now they're going to look out here and not know what to do because they're like, well, my mom, this is the type of person that she is. This is the way that she was moving. So I can only assume this is how other women are going to move as well. Right. Because usually the parent is the ruler when it deals with society, when it deals with the interactions of other people and all of these things. And then on top of that, Miss Allen decided that she wanted to try to say that she was a victim. She wanted to try to play the, the weak woman card that, oh, I, you know, I was a, a battered woman. I had no other way. My back was against the wall and he, he just left me no choice. So he left you no choice. So you mean to tell me that you defended yourself, but then you went beyond defending yourself to then deciding to divide his body up. That doesn't sound like self-defense to me. That's that's not the way that self-defense works. That's not what anybody would do if they're actually defending themselves. And then on top of that, when his last breaths of life were to his stepchildren, he was like, yo, I need help called 911. You turn to the children and tell them no. Wow. And then you want to say that you're the victim. You want to try to play this card? Yeah. Okay. Like I said, you're looking at women continuously at this moment in time, destroy their own lives and their freedoms, along with the psyches of other individuals that are close to them. And again, this is going to be a problem that is going to get worse. So for a lot of the other women out there, again, you want to just solely focus on whatever it is that men are, men are doing completely fine. Just remember that a woman like this could come into contact with a man that is in your life that you love. It could be a brother. It could be a nephew, could be an uncle, could be a grandfather, could even be your father. And she could do the exact same thing that Miss Allen did. And then what are you going to do? Who are you going to cry to? Who, who are you going to ask? for help? Who do you think is going to care? Because you decided that you didn't care initially because it did not 
affect you and it wasn't at your doorstep. So like I said before, I'm just giving a warning out here before it's too late and before other people have to suffer the exact same circumstances as Mr. Allen. Hopefully everybody will pay attention to everything instead of just one side.